May the peace, blessings, and mercy of God be upon you. Planet Earth is amazing in every sense of the word. And scientists were able to know a lot of information about the planet Earth. And one of this information is the mass of the planet Earth. But have you ever asked yourself before, how did scientists calculate the mass of the planet Earth while we were already on it? Welcome. I am Mohamed Saleh. But before we start, if you are still new to the channel, do not forget to like and activate the bell to receive our videos first. From the buttons below. If you write on Google the mass of the planet Earth, it will tell you directly that the mass is 5 to the 97th of 100 times 10 to the 24th kilogram. But how did we even get to this number? In order to know how we got to the mass of the planet, we first need to know how to calculate the mass of any body. In order to calculate the mass of any body in a traditional way, we prepare a balance such as the sensitive scale, for example, and put the body on it and see how much the indicator will give us. And this value is the mass. But we won't be able to apply it with the planet Earth because it's a little heavy. So, what are the other methods through which we can determine the mass of objects? You have, for example, the density and volume method. The law of density states that the density of any object is equal to its mass times its volume. I mean, we have a piece of iron, the volume of which is 2 cubic meters, and the density of iron is equal to 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter, so the mass of this piece of iron is the result of multiplying the volume by the density, and this will give us 15,600 kilograms, or approximately 15,000 and a half tons, but is it useful? We apply this law to a huge body like planet Earth. The truth is yes, but the problem with this method is not in calculating the size of the planet. The problem is in calculating his density. We can know the density of any object when we know the type of matter it is composed of. But the problem with planet Earth is that we don't know what exactly the components the Earth is made of. Not even the proportions of each component alone. I mean, for example, the Earth's surface has mountains, deserts, forests, rivers, seas, and so on. All of them are things that we are supposed to determine the cost of the materials that they consist of. This is because they are part of the planet Earth. In addition, we need to calculate the exact percentage of each of them. This is of course very difficult. And all of this is a com, and the hero of the Earth is another com. Until today, we don't know with 100% certainty what is there in the ground, especially on the abyssal depths. And we will talk in future episodes about the deepest hole humans have ever been able to make, its depth was about a kilometer. It is the Kola well that was dug in Russia during the days of the Union, and, despite the huge effort that was made in it, it is considered a very shallow hole compared to the size of the Earth. And that is why, after this depth, we do not know what is there for sure. All the information we have regarding the components of the inner layers of the Earth is just conclusions and hypotheses through science and through the study and analysis of seismic waves. That is why we cannot calculate the mass of the Earth based on its density. But we can do the opposite. What does it mean when we know the mass of the Earth, through which we can deduce an average value for the density of the Earth? Now what is left to do? So that we can calculate the mass of the planet Earth in a simple way in which we calculate the mass of the planet. And the beginning of the tip of the thread in this method was with the famous physicist Isaac Newton. Newton in the 17th century estimated that he knew that there is a hidden force of attraction that exists between all the bodies in the universe. Any two bodies, whatever their type, has an attractive force that exists between them. And this force depends mainly on these two bodies and the distance between them. I mean, as there is a force of attraction between the Earth and the Moon. There is now a force of attraction between you and the mobile phone that you are holding in your hand. And between you and the cupboard next to you in the room. Rather, there is a force of attraction between you and the Earth itself. I mean, as the planet Earth pulls you and wins you towards it. You also attract him towards you. Hence, Newton was able to establish the famous law, which is the law of universal gravitation. And what his law says, there is a gravitational force between any two bodies in the universe. This force is directly proportional to the product of their masses. And inversely with the square of the distance between their centers. And what we can translate mathematically into this equation. 
With this equation, we can know the size of any body on the surface of the Earth and apply the general law of gravity between it and the Earth itself and we consider that M1 is the mass of the small body that we have and its value is the mass of the Earth. But in order to also reach the solution of the equation and get the value of its value, which is the mass of the Earth, we need to bring the three megastars who are still in the equation and who are F, J and R squared. For J, Newton, the first station of the law, he said that there must be a mathematical Sabbath name J, or the general part constant. But at the time, he did not know how to determine the exact value of this constant. The topic needed technology and tools that were not available in Newton's era. But at the same time, Newton was sure that this number was very small. Indeed, with the advent of the year 1797 AD, the physicist Henry Cavendish estimated, through his experiments, that he would produce an approximate value for the constant g. And with the development of technology more and more, physicists were able to improve the previous experiments and they reached a more accurate number than the first, which is estimated at about 6.674, 3 times 10 to the negative 11th power. This is how we have the first unknown in the equation. The second unknown we want to calculate is a squared, which translates to the distance between the center of the body, that is on the surface of the Earth and the center of the planet itself. And we are negligible because any small body on the surface of the Earth is considered very small compared to the size of the planet itself. We can consider that the distance R is the radius of the planet Earth along a bump like this. How much is the difference between your belly and the Earth? They will not make a difference in the final calculation. How do we know the radius of the planet Earth? We do not know how to reach the deep layers of the Earth's crust, as we explained a while ago. We will know how to calculate half of the diameter of the entire Earth. The answer to this issue was with the Greek astronomer and mathematician Aristarchus. Aristarchus was one of the first people to infer the sphericity of the Earth through the shadow of objects when the sun's rays fall on them. When he was going to be licensed, he lived in Alexandria and he read in one of the books that the pillars and vertical bars that are in the temples of Aswan, when the sun falls on them at noon on the 21st of June, there will be no shade at all for the pillar or the pillar. The point of the shadow is under the body of the column itself. And this topic aroused a very cheap curiosity. And he said, I wonder if I watched one of the columns in Alexandria Masla or stuck a stick in the ground and watched their shadow on the 21st of June at noon also. The stick that I have in Alexandria will also not have a shadow, as it does in the obelisks of Aswan. Indeed, I did an experiment, and the surprise was that the columns in Alexandria on the same day and in the middle of the day had a shadow, unlike the obelisks of Aswan. From this experience, he concluded that the Earth is spherical in shape. He also estimated that he could deduce the Earth's circumference through a simple calculation. The angle between the stick and its shadow in Alexandria was 7.2 degrees. Geometrically, it is the same angle between Aswan and Alexandria at the center of the Earth through the feature of meeting the head in the series. And because the distance between Alexandria and Aswan was known and who was able to travel a day by camel, which, according to estimates, was 90-25 kilometers. They estimated that he calculated the circumference of the planet through the properties of the circle. The output, according to the calculations of the Starkus, was 46,000, solid and 50 kilometers. Which, although it is an inaccurate number according to the current technology calculations, is close to it. The currently recognized figure for the Earth's circumference is 40,075 kilometers. Finally, by knowing the circumference of the Earth, we can estimate by a simple equation that we know the radius. And what came out in the end 6,370 kilometers. Focus with us and do not get lost. We are trying to calculate the mass of the entire planet Earth through Newton's law of gravity. Until now, we have obtained two unknown numbers from the three. Faddle is an unknown number, which is LF to complete the equation. F in Newton's law is the force of gravity, which is equal to the acceleration due to gravity or acceleration multiplied by the mass of the accelerating body. F means nine eight points in one M. Thus, we have all the unknowns, so we will substitute a direct compensation in the equation that we have in order to finally get the value of its value, which is the mass of the planet Earth, which will equal 5.95 times 10 to the 24th kilogram, and of course through the technology that exists today, the mass of a planet is calculated the Earth is more accurate, such as monitoring the location and speed of satellites or spacecraft that launch dot outside the Earth. I mean, it's much easier now.
That's it, we're done. Who has reached here? Those who arrived here, you are the best people. And as usual, if there is a question that comes to you at night or during the day and confuses you, write it to us in the comments under the video so that we can answer it. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and share with others. And for the people who see us for the first time, do a subscribe and activate the bell so that our videos will reach you first. I see you next episode. Goodbye.